Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make these ornamental vases. It should only take about five minutes. This one actually took me 45 minutes, but that's because it's got some minor details and I was experimenting with new features. But with this technique, you can create really nice ornate vases really quickly. So to start with, I'm in 2.8, but you can do this in 2.79. It's pretty much the same. And let's start with any kind of blob. It can be an icosphere or you can just subdivide the main sphere here with control 5 then go over to the subdivision surface modifier and apply that now we've got an object to sculpt we can go up the top here to sculpting mode and the first thing to do is get a vase type of shape so i'm going to turn dyne topo on which is in the tools down here if you don't see my brush it's the tool setting up here so this button here i'll click dyne topo and press ok and I always like to have constant detail, especially to start. Then I know how much topology I'm adding to my mesh. I also like to choose the little pipette. So click on that, click on your shape and see the detail level. That way, if you've rescaled it or done anything interesting to your shape, you know what resolution it is. I think a good starting point is around seven. And I'm going to get my grab brush and the key options that you're looking for are down at the bottom here. So under symmetry, so if I pull that out, you turn off the X mirror and here's the radial tool. That's the interesting one that we're looking at. So the Z axis is going to be the most important because that's going sort of upwards this way. And then it will be a radial mirror around that. So let's turn this up to something like 32. I always think it's good to have something divisible by four. Now if I get my grab brush, you can see it's creating interesting shapes. So let's create a kind of vase here. I'm just smoothing that out a bit. Don't worry about these tiny glitches that you get in 2.8 at the moment. Uh, they disappear when I go to layer mode, or layout mode, sorry, and back to sculpting mode and they all disappear. So you can see I'm slowly building up some sort of vase shape. I've just gone into layout mode, so Dyne Topo was turned off. You don't have to use the grab brush, you can actually use the draw brush as well. So I can create this shape just by doing brush strokes. So we've got some unusual looking vars here. I'll time lapse some of this because you don't need to see me in the creation process. Okay, so once we've got our basic shape, then we can really up the resolution. So if I turn this up to something like 80, ideally we'll press the remesh option and detail flood fill. But pressing that in 2.8 sometimes works and sometimes crashes. And the magic of television, it actually worked this time. So I'm just gonna quickly smooth that out and see what that looks like. Yep, that's looking great. So now I should actually be able to turn Dyne Topo off as long as I'm not adding too much detail, we should be okay with it off now and it will work much faster. So now I'm smoothing this out. It's working a lot quicker before it was crashing a bit. So you can turn Dyne Topo off when you've got to a point of your basic silhouette or your basic outline. At this point now I can do some interesting shapes. So with the draw brush, I can come quite close in here perhaps and do some interesting shapes. You want to as much as possible do it in one clean stroke, not like I did there. So let's try that again. And you can see these patterns emerging. And because we've got that symmetry turned on or that radial symmetry turned on, it's creating some nice shapes. So this is just with the draw brush. You can also use things like the crease brush. Remember to smooth out your shape so it's nice and even before adding the details. So I'll just do that quickly. And of course I've got radial symmetry on so the smooth is going across right round the mesh.
If you want to do some really fine features, you could turn DynTopo back on. Also, if you want to get rid of that warning, you can go to the object data and under the UV maps, it creates a UV map when it's first made. You can get rid of that. And that should get rid of that warning. So perhaps putting something like relative detail on at this point. So now when I zoom in, it will be more detailed. And bringing this down to something like three. And my computer's starting to lag just a touch. It will with Dyntopo turned on. So if you can do a detailed flood fill with more polygons, then you're going to be better off. You can also use a smooth stroke for this, especially if you're using a mouse. And you can change and vary the symmetry. So if you would like to see the rest of the time lapse, then do look at my Sculpt January number 26, which is ornaments. I'll also be talking through some tips and tricks about what I've learned from making this vase. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.